a while since this has happened, but it's a Firebird Special. <coughs> He's probably getting sick and tired of hearing that. Um, first question, thoughts on Whisper of the Wolf from IDW so far? From the concept art alone, she looks promising, but the only major critique I would offer is that it looks a little too Sega-fied, in the sense of... It's almost like create a fan character model that they would have on, on DeviantArt, where... Here are the base models, and here's what you can do. It's also it's very similar to what they did for create your own character for Sonic Force. It's like here's the base models, here's what you can do with it. I feel like Whisper of the Wolf is what you would do in the create a character mode. I say what we you know people can say what they will about the characters in Archies and Satan, but at least, more or less, characters like Antoine, Bunny, uh, Lupe, Dulcy, and obviously Sally, all had their own distinctive, different looks about them. There were things that set them apart from each other. And this was an inherent problem I noticed with the reboot. Although Sally was still very recognizable, she looked like what would happen if an artist from Sonic Team had drawn her. I'm like, what was so wrong with the way that she had been drawn in Archie's? Like the way that, um... Uh... There's a really, uh, famous artist, uh... Uh, Stephen Butler, you know, what was so wrong with the way Stephen Butler had drawn her, because he really helped to give her her own look and her own identity. I, I see what they do um, with the art style and the reboot, and this is an inherent problem I'm noticing with the IDW uh, comic, is that it's... It's almost like a, a set standard template, you know, they're not really doing anything where characters have their own distinct little differences and nuances. It's just like, no, keep to these templates. And it's like, well, where's the variety? You know, it's almost like singularity in the worst way possible. So, you know, I'd like to see something from the artist for IDW to make Whisper stand out more. You know, don't make it look like it's just a female version of Sonic, but done with wolf characteristics. You know, do these little things, like I say, where it's going to make them stand apart. I'm not saying it's awful, and we'll try again. I'm not saying it's awful, but there could be more done with them, is all I'm going to say. Question two. Do you think Sally should keep her ring blades or have an updated, upgraded version of the Sword of Acorns as a primary weapon if or when she returns? What's wrong with having both? The Ring Blades were a nice addition, but, you know, the Sword of Acorns was a nice little thing that, you know, there was that kind of, I don't want to say otherworldly, but there was that little something in her, in her arsenal, besides her martial arts training and having Nicole as her, as her tech, uh, as her tech aide, you know, it was something, you know, she could go to. The other thing I feel like they need to do as and when, not if, when they bring her back into IDW, because I'm a firm believer in faith. Some would call that blind optimism, I just call it never say never. Uh, the thing I would have done for her specifically when she returns is bring her back up to the character, the way her character is written before the reboot, because a lot of people have said post-reboot, it felt like it was a dumbed-down version of her. Not to say that she was completely unintelligent, but she wasn't as resourceful or as savvy as she once was. Now, that may be just Sega's meddling, or because, you know, they were so uh, micromanaging 
the, the comic franchise, which I don't think is the right way to go about it. I think it's better just to let the writers do as they know best and actually create these really engaging stories and not to have something that's just going to be so contrived and so unredeeming. It's probably one of the reasons why the comic ended up getting cancelled in the end, because there were just so many ideas that just didn't work. And of course, splitting Sonic and Sally out, I mean, come on people, what the hell were you thinking? That's like... That's like, um... You know, if Michael Knight, if Stevie Mason in season four of Knight Rider hadn't died near the end of The Scent of Roses, it'd be like, splitting those two apart. You know, these are two characters that are deeply in love and are made for each other. Why would you want to take two characters apart that the fandom loves? You know, to me, it, it doesn't make sense from a writing perspective. If you have two characters that mean the world to each other, here's a sensible idea. Keep them together. Just saying. Three. May need a reminder, and I keep forgetting that I've asked this or not. You have done several times before, why should this be any different? But since you are more familiar with Fleetway's characters than I am, I am indeed, what are the characters' personalities of the following light? Johnny Lightfoot, Techno the Canary, Porker Lewis, Grimmer, along with major and exclusive characters that may be missing. Grimmer was basically Robotnik's science lackey. He was basically an English version of Snively. Uh, just a little bit taller, green-skinned, and he just came across as a little bit more slimy, probably more so than Snively. Porker Lewis was was a fighter for uh, Sonic's Freedom Fighters in the Fleetway comic, but because uh, when Johnny Lightfoot got killed in a fight with um, one of the, the Draken Empire foot soldiers, which also caused Sonic to have his green eyes. Um, he kind of retired from the field, he just acted as a um, kind of like a, a command post position in, you know, in the Green Hill Zone base that they had at the time. And then eventually he just became like a, an extra pair of hands for Knuckles on the floating island. Techno the Canary she is kind of, um, I suppose in some weird way she was, um, Fleetway's answer to Sally in some ways, but she wasn't, she wasn't so much of a fighter, she was more of a engineer slash mechanic, she was always someone just looking to aid the crew, and she was a very good companion for Amy Rose, and it was actually Techno that actually came up with the armor for Short Fuse the Cybernet, because his armor was actually a, an alloy called Megatol. Yes, I realize how ridiculous that sounds, but it is what it is. But, you know, she was, you know, a cybernetic genius. She was one of Robotnik's um, engineers, by force I might add, but like most of the characters she found a way of getting out and just started doing things for the Freedom Fighters and what have you. Johnny Lightfoot, as I mentioned, he's been one of Sonic's uh, long time companions in the Fleetway comic, uh, particularly I th think it was issue... I want to say issue 12 of, of Fleetway, whereby it had been six months since the Omniviewer had sent Sonic and Friends into the future, because Omniviewer had been taken over by Robotnik, but Omni only sent them so far into the future so that Sonic could still do something to stop Robotnik's um, regime. And you see Johnny in one scene with Bob Beaky, which was Sonic's alias and disguise when you know, he just needed to go around and not be uh, chastised for any specific reason. And you see Johnny putting on this red bomber jacket, jeans, and this sort of metallic bow staff with 
huge blocks at the end, as was his way of using a weapon, and he just became the heavy of the group, and I quite liked his character. Um, I don't know the specifics of why he was killed off, maybe it was just to um, give Sonic something to um, reignite his mission. Because he felt like Johnny was his responsibility, or his death was his responsibility, but there's just one particular issue after the Floating Iron Dead's sunken into the ocean, that he just comes back along at the end and he sort of explains, you know what, I gotta do Johnny justice. That sounds like a good, good name, like, coming soon to a cinema near you, Johnny Justice. I like it. Bonus question, who do you think will win in a death match? Sharp 2 from Land Before Time or Rexy from Jurassic Park? Hmm. See, that is an interesting question. If it were Rexy circa 1993, she would whoop Sharp 2's ass. But if it's Rexy today, It'll be close, because I don't want to say um, age is a factor, because I don't want to be ageist or anything, but you have to take the realistic factor into it. Um, dependent on what, f uh, on, you know, what age she would be fighting the shark too far. I mean, Rexy has a lot of um, savvy and experience to her credit, but we saw against the Irex, although she could hold her own for a time, she did get her ass handed to her, and it was only because of Blue and the Mosasaur that, you know, the Irex lost in the worst way possible for the Irex. But, again, if it was young Rexy, not a problem, she would win. Current Rexy, But yeah, she would win in either situation, but current Rexy would struggle. That's just my take on it. Those have been your questions for those week. I'm going to try that again, folks. Those have been your questions for this week. You know how this works by now to send me more questions. And I'll see you next time. Ask again.